All right, let's bring in Kaylee McEnany, host of Outnumbered, and the former White House press secretary, Kaylee. Good to see you, and congratulations on the new addition to the Yay! family. Woohoo! Yeah, I saw the pictures on Thank Outnumbered. Thank you. He's adorable. <laughs> He's right upstairs, and congratulations to you guys on the new oh, show. It's awesome. Thank you. thank you. So let's get your take on on how did Republicans and Democrats do in this hearing to, to expose the politicization of the FBI and DOJ? They did a great job. I mean, I loved when Jim Jordan, he talked about these whistleblowers from the FBI saying it's unprecedented, that nothing like this has happened before. This number, dozens of whistleblowers coming to him. But what Jim Jordan does so well, and I'm so glad he's the chairman of this, is he lays out facts that are indisputable. In fact, he laid out this timeline here. I have it. You know, on November 18th of 21, the FBI put a threat tag on parents. This is according to a whistleblower. And he goes on to say, on May 11th of 2022, dozens of parents with the threat tags were investigated. Imagine that, the FBI investigating parents. But he laid out data points, facts, dates that are indisputable. So I personally can't wait to hear from these whistleblowers. I think it'll be chilling what we hear, because if today just touched the surface, what we learned is we have an FBI, just as you both said, totally and completely out of control uh, and are tyrannically wielding a level of power they're not meant to have. And I always love to hear Jamie Raskin get upset. <laughs> and they were not happy he wasn't about the hearing. <laughs> Kaylee, listen to this. It could take oversight down a very dark alley filled with conspiracy theories and disinformation, a place where facts are the enemy and partisan destruction is the overriding goal. Millions of Americans already fear that weaponization is the right name for this special subcommittee, not because weaponization of the government is its target, but because weaponization of the government is its purpose. <laughs> Come on, Kaylee. <laughs> Come on. Um, and this is why it's, it's my view. And you may disagree with me, Sean. I know you were on the Hill, so you may have a different institutional view. Um, but it's my view, just like Jamie Raskin had the January 6th committee, which was totally partisan. You did not have uh, anyone else on the Republican side who was a true Republican asking questions or presenting an alternate point of view. I wish this committee, they would have one committee, my colleague Stephen Miller said it yesterday, this weaponization committee perhaps, where it was a select committee of only Republicans. Let's play the same game as the Democrats, not have AOC screaming on the other side of a committee hearing or Jamie Rasky, Raskin calling conspiracy theories, a Republican committee that can be mature, adult-like, and fact-driven. Um, this is good so far, but I'd love to see us follow that same mold. You know, Kaylee, I've been advocating, advocating for that. Kevin McCarthy has taken the higher ground, though, and higher road and said, you know what? Mm -hmm. I just won't let Democrats serve on some committees, but I will let them serve on a committee. That's not what Nancy Pelosi and Democrats did to Marjorie Taylor Greene exactly. or Paul Gozar. But I want to switch gears on you because this is a meaningful story for me as a Catholic. The FBI, they're reportedly uh, retracting a leaked document that advised radical traditionalist Catholic ideology is attracting violent extremists. Now, the memo reads, quote, Interest of radically or ethnically or racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists in radical traditionalist Catholic ideology almost certainly presents new mitigation opportunities. All right, Kaylee, so I don't know if it's holy water. I don't know if it's incense, you know, in the traditional Latin mass. <laughs> but can you believe the FBI is targeting Catholics? Which, by the way, I thought that was protected in, the, in, in our Constitution, but they're now going to target, target them as extremists? It's unbelievable. Yes. I mean, look, I, I'm a Southern Baptist girl, but I went to Catholic school my whole life. My husband's Catholic. We go to mass every other week and I see taken there raising her hand. <laughs> um, but I can tell you, I've never encountered a, a radical traditional Catholic or any Catholic wanting to commit violence. This is insane. And it was a creature, I believe, of the Southern Poverty Law Center, right. which right. targets mainstream groups like the Alliance for Defending Freedom and just calls them a hate group. So you have a, a left wing organization that targets a, a, a faith, uh, and then here you have the FBI then falling right in line. It's amazing, but not surprising, because this is what they did to pro-life groups. You remember Mr. Hook, who was a pro-life uh, advocate, who DOJ charged, and he was just acquitted by a jury this week. They go That's after amazing. the pro-lifers, but not those attacking the pro-life centers. The, at Quantico, they teach the FBI that the Southern Poverty Law Center is not a legitimate organization. They create boogeymen to then fundraise yes. off of said evildoers. 
I, just a little, can I just have a quick yes. moment? A little bit of Virginia history. So the first governor of Virginia was Patrick Henry, and in Richmond he gave his famous give me liberty or give me death speech, which was the call to revolution. And if not for Patrick Henry, we would not have a Bill of Rights. We would not have the first 10 amendments to the Constitution because he was suspicious of the Constitution and the power handed to the federal government. And so by the FBI in Richmond targeting Catholics, it is a very violation of the First Amendment. So they are proving to Patrick Henry, who died in 1799 and is buried in my hometown, that he was right. We, he, we had everything to fear from a too powerful, overweening federal government. I well just, said. Yeah, Sorry. It's, it's a, a great point. Well said. No, it's the same amendment that protects freedom of religion also protects freedom of speech, the right. First Amendment. And I would just point out that when I was White House press secretary, uh, going back to the weaponization point, my account was taken off Twitter on October 14th, 2020, when I shared the New York Post story. It was my personal account. But just think about that to add to your First Amendment point. You have the FBI talking to social media groups, and all of a sudden the White House press secretary, though it was my personal account, is taken off of one of those platforms. So the federal government perhaps uh, undermining the executive branch of the federal government, which is actually the elected portion of it. It's extraordinary, Dagan, um, and, and this is why I'm glad that we're getting to the bottom of it, at least here in Republicans mm -hmm. on the Hill, certainly. Kelly McEnany, thank you for joining us, and again, congratulations. Thank you. You too. Appreciate it. Big hug. Big kiss to the babies.